Hello, welcome to part two of trenching and shoring for White River Electric uh, line crew. My apologies for having a second video. I had no idea that my camera would just record for 20 minutes and then arbitrarily stop recording and then I would just go on and on and on. Anyway, back to what we were talking about, soil mechanics. So we see a hard pan clay soil here. It's expansive when it's wet. It contracts when it's... Um, when it dries out and that causes these fissure cracks which could affect your trench. You may have water sloughing in, you may have different lenses of soil overlaying other lenses of soil which may cause sloughing into the trench such as a sand lens below a hard pan clay lens in this case and a lot of hydration, a lot of water. Tension blocks may form that crack on the surface that we saw with that hard pan clay may form and that could topple into the uh, trench. You may have sliding. This could occur from a lens of like sand underneath the lens of clay. Toppling. You may have a whole block topple into your trench on top of you. You may have bulging occurring on the side of your trench. You may have heaving up at the bottom of the trench from the soil weight around the trench. And if you're close enough to the water table, you actually may have boiling of water up into the bottom of your trench from the water table. We don't necessarily have to worry about that in our situation. Loose rock and soil should be stored two feet away from the side of the trench at all times. Again, we see this here. We see a good benching of this trench. And again, this is sanitary sewer. What they would do at this point is they would come in and they would backfill that and then check compaction. Actually, they'd shade it, and then they'd backfill it. They'd put pea gravel around it, then they would backfill it, check it for compaction, and keep backfilling. Protective systems, there's three types of protective systems, sloping, shoring, and shielding. Those three systems will protect you in a trench. Here's an example of a trench box. They've got this down to an art. They just move it down the trench with the uh, excavator as it goes, cover up as it, you know, right behind it and you just get the work done that is needed within the trench box. Safe, efficient, effective. Here's a shallow trench that they sloped out. Doesn't really even look like a trench. I mean, make, take it from the grade of the road to the guy and maybe you could say his foot is less than, is more than four feet below the original ground surface, but it's just sloped out. This one is benched out. These are poor examples of trenches, my apologies. So sloping of trenches, type A soil, type B soil, type C soil. You can see as, you, as your soil gets l less consolidated, more sandy, the more you have to spread it out. A lot of cooperatives will just say, let's go with the type C and let's always make our trenches one and a half to one. Then you don't have to prove anything out. You don't have to do soil tests. You don't have to do the tor vein. You don't have to do the shear vein. You don't have to do the penetrometer, the ANSI thumb test. You just call all soils the same type and do the trench the same type. That's what a lot of companies do. Benching is another uh, effective way. And again, type A soils, one to three quarter, and uh, type B's one to one. You bench it out. That takes the stress off. It's not going to cave in on you. You may need to do different uh, angles in different soils. So we have a type C soil overlaying a type A soil. So of course you got to spread the type C soil out more and the type A soil out less. Spoils two feet from the edge of the trench. Shoring. We do have shoring out at the warehouse. The jacks that are used, we got screw jacks, we got hydraulic jacks. Hydraulic shoring is safe, it's lightweight, one man, it's gauge regulated so you can keep even pressures. It adapts to different widths and different applications. Trench box. Cave-ins are the number one leading causes of death and injury in the construction industry. Another one is falls from heights. The cause of cave-in fatalities are human errors, the attributable ignorance, poor judgment, and attitudes. I'll get in that trench. I'll get out of that trench really quick. I was that guy. I worked for a soils testing company, and we would test uh, soil compaction in the bottom of trenches. And if I told that guy on the excavator I wasn't going to go in that trench because it wasn't safe, he would have sent me back to my work, and then the engineer I worked for would have promptly fired me. 
and I would have been out of a job. So we'd look both ways. I'd jump down in there, take my reading, and get out. That's how a lot of places work. That's not how we work, but that's how a lot of places work. Annual facts, 100 to 400 people are killed in cave-ins, 1,000 to 4,000 are injured annually. Cave-ins cause death basically by suffocation, crushing, loss of circulation, and stuff falling in on you. Always have to coordinate with rescue before you're going to do a trenching operation or even a confined space entry. It's always good to self-coordinate your own rescue because then you don't have to rely on someone else, some third party to come rescue you or your friends. So the best way to not have rescue is to completely avoid the rescue situation altogether. Don't go in that space unless you absolutely have to. If you're going to go in that confined space, uh, do some self-rescue training situations. Trenching, don't get in a trenching situation where you have to call uh, the vol Meeker Volunteer Fire Department. It's usually a body retrieval when they come in to rescue you. And again, it's a long, drawn-out process. After the job, you want to remove the shoring from the bottom up. You want to backfill that trench immediately. You want to review any hazards or problems associated with that um, trench excavation. Because then if you take home, if you do an after-action review, next time you do it, you can do it better. You can do it more efficiently do more productively. In summary, call before you dig. Always, we know this, one visual, one manual test for soil is required. If we go with one type of soil, classify our soils as just one type, then we can completely get out of this one visual, one manual test for soil type. That the competent person must do prior to trenching, during trenching as well. Ladder access and exit every 25 feet when the trench is 4 feet deep. Protective system when the trench is 5 feet deep in depth or deeper. And so you either need to shore it, shield it, or bench it. Trenches over 20 feet deep require PE, and so I'm sure just ask Chris Renninger and he'll be like, yeah, sure, I'll sign off on that. Not. So in closing, I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much, and I look forward to these trainings in the future. Please leave feedback. I'll try to get better in the future. Thank you very much. Have a good day.